how to create the ultimate disc golf destination in the world. It's all about how and also the data-driven marketing in this. And um, I have, now it's 16 months, this all started when the pandemic hit Orland and all the rest of the world. The local government started uh, action group with people from the public sector and also from the private sector. Every person in this action group had different tasks and the tasks for me and my federation was to find new ways to get people to travel to Orland because we understand very fast if people can't travel they will not come to Orland. And uh, we had meetings almost every week and the fourth meeting we had was 14 of April 2020. It was my turn to talk and uh, I said we need something that is COVID safe. It has to be outdoors and it also has to be some kind of reason that people will come to Orland and hopefully stay more nights than they are using uh, have been doing before because a traditional tourist today stays 1.4 nights. And um, I was telling him about this and then I talked about behavior and uh, it's very normal behavior during this pandemic was that people were walking around in the forest and in the mountains. And another thing I said is I haven't seen that a lot of people are playing disc golf in the local park. And when I said the disc golf, hmm, maybe that is the answer for this equation. So after the meeting, I started to look after uh, facts because I'm really a data-driven person. And very fast I saw that the disc golf have been growing very much even before the pandemic. But it has exploding during the pandemic. I also take part of a Finnish survey that showed that a normal disc golf player are playing at least 40 courses. And then I thought, hmm, maybe there are course collectors like the bird collectors, bong, I don't know what that's in English, but they are searching and collecting things. And another very important parameter was that 91% of all the courses in the world, around 12,000, are free to play. And that means that the courses are not on valuable property because it's free to play, then it's hard to get money. And the whole idea was to get people to come to Orland and help the tourist companies. So this was sort of the conditions I was thinking of. And then after that, how can we get this spread in the world? And we didn't have much money, so we needed word of mouth. And what is word of mouth? Yes, it is storytelling, but it's not we who tell the story. We should give the people the reason and possibility to tell our story. And that is called story building. And of course, this is obvious for many people that it's much easier to sell something that people want to buy than to try to sell something that people not want to buy, but maybe you want them to convince to buy it. And that is a huge difference in marketing budget. So the idea was to get something crazy. And with these parameters from the beginning, we needed a lot of courses. So a gigantic disc golf park was the idea. And it should help the local tourist companies. So the idea was to place the courses close to the tourist company. Because that is not common in the rest of the world. And then I needed some kind of partner to help in this crazy project. So I asked the disc golf supplier, the biggest one in the Nordic countries, and it happens to be the same company who have created the disc golf park in Lappo, in the northern part of Holland, and also the, in the south. So I asked them and I said, can you help us in a project to create 16 courses in two months time? And they were, do you mean holes? Because it's 18 holes in a course. So it was sort of a strange uh, conversation, but after a while they understand this is a really, <clears throat> he, me he means business, 
And I had the government behind me. So after a week, we understand this could be a really awesome project together. And um, here you can see what the CEO said. No one ever had asked such a thing before. So less than one month after the ID, 12th of May, it was time for a press conference. Here you see some of the local politicians who are helping me uh, and presenting the ID in the disc golf communities. The reaction in the disc golf community was huge because no one have ever tried to get money from something that are free to play. This is the reaction from the Professional Disc Golf Association, 16 courses, 4 months and 1 island dreams. And also in the next one you can see the biggest uh, U-Disc uh, supplier of um, tracking your courses said, uh, and that was the second most read article 2020. Then it was time to start building the courses. When, uh, in practical, it usually takes three to five months to build one course. And we were planning to build almost 16 courses in less than two, hour, uh, two months. But we succeeded to create 10 courses and it was almost 3,000 hours were put down in voluntary to make these courses. This is from Soltuna course. To understand if this will be uh, working or not, I made surveys in both Sweden and Finland and I asked them, how many courses will you play if you're coming to Holland Islands? And in Sweden, 75% of the participants in the survey said at least five courses. So it seems to be correct that they are course collectors. And the same numbers in Finland. And then I asked how many people will coming to this all on island, and it was not that many single or couples. It was most people that were at least three to five persons. And the same result in Finland. And then, how many days will they stay on this trip? And because it was a lot of courses placed on different locations on all the islands, they needed to stay many nights to be able to play the courses. So the average was at least three to six days. And this is one of the few things that we use for marketing. We rent a helicopter, and we rent the helicopter to be able to open sev uh, in seven hours 11 courses. So that's a world record. That is one thing, it's good marketing. But the other thing was that we got a really nice video that we could share. And maybe one of the most important things that a lot of people on the courses were filming when we come down with the helicopter and when we take off and spread it in social media. So we got a lot of attention in that way. At the same time, we got um, world record of most courses per capita in the world and also per land area. And this is um, what I say, a very important data driven. So we put uh, counters on every course so we can say how many people have played not who but how many rounds have been played and it's also a sort of a covid safe thing because if it's red on one of the places it means a lot of people playing on that place so uh, it has double effects on this one and then we have uh, statistics in july 130,000 rounds have been played since we opened this up. That means it's 6 million thrones are made in the Åland forest. Almost 36,000 hours are spent in the mountains on Åland Islands. And then I made a survey of the Åland people. And it showed that 11% of the Åland people have played at least once a week. And then I made a survey a couple of weeks ago. 38% have played at least two times a week and almost one third have played even more. So it has a really good health aspect also in this tourist project. And one thing that is uh, really important is trying to see when we don't have a good statistics. But one thing is search volume. And search volume is important because eight of 10 businesses are starting with a Google search. So I had taken the common uh, effects we have here, uh, or activities. 
So the first one is Åland and hike routes. And you can see here that uh, in May 2020, it was a pike. That means that Finnish people were searching for Åland hike routes. And then it has faded away because nobody has really nurtured this uh, need in Finland. Then, then you have bicycling. And you can see that this has a natural, because a lot of people have done this in many, many years. But you have an increase from Finland during the pandemic. And the third one is golf. They usually have a lot of customers or players from Sweden. But now we can see also it has increased from Finland during the period. If you have some kind of connection between search volume and playing. And then you have disc golf. And in July it was over 2,000 Finnish people searching for Ahvenama and Frisbee golf. Because they say Frisbee golf in Finland and not disc golf. And then I made um, a comparison between search and here you have the numbers for the search and you can see that is a top in July this year and then I add this with uh, the rounds that are played and you can see it's following pretty good the numbers and thanks to help from the disc golf apps I can say that in July over 9000 of these rounds in July was made by tourists that doesn't say how many people, but at least the rounds. This is showing the last 16 months in YouTube, the views of content that has Ahvenama in it. So the three top, uh, or the two top, is actually disc golf videos that people have shared. And the two others are fishing. And if you take the fifth, is also a disc golf video. So it's really have a big impact in YouTube that disc golf are good to promote their stuff. And then how many tourists has actually played? It's over 3000 people this year that has played and that is thanks to you disc oops and disc golf metrics who have given this information. And comparing then with the numbers from the service it should be at least four nights per person and that means it's 12,000 overnights comp uh, we can say is doing with the uh, disc golf and the value is 1 mil million euro and uh, also you can say this what I was all telling you that 50% in July was and here is some of the people I have met on this journey so called field recognition in Helsinki, we have a lot of people who have come here. And in this case, it's six older men staying for four nights. It's the second time they are here. This is a picture of one of the guys who made this video. He's a professional. And they were here, both these groups, in beginning of May. And this is uh, four girls from Tampere. They were here in the beginning of June, four nights. And this is a guy, 15 years old. He brought his whole family and they had a house wagon and stayed for 11 nights because they were stopping all around the Holland Islands to be able to play. And these are maybe my favorites. It's the half of the gang of 11, 20 plus guys from Tampere coming here with small mopeds, monkey hondos, and staying for one week in the beginning of September. And we have the whole spectra, I would say, because this is six guys staying in the northern part of Holland in one of the more expensive cottages. And they have our master chef, Mikke Björklund, to make a free uh, dishes dinner for them. So it's the whole spectra. And this is a picture of from the first Åland Championship, 1982, in uh, Badesparken. In the middle, we see Lasse Hellsten, who is the guy behind this disc golf from the beginning. And this is something that I think is really important. This is 40 years since uh, next year. So we will have a celebration of this uh, happening. And... The world's first disc golf stamp will be sold 25th of March, 25th of March. So this is the first day cover. And here you can see that the artist is Sanna Mander 
and it's from the hole number five, that is the signature hole in Bodesparken. So I'm really, really happy that we can have the local post office to giving this. So thank you for me.